Hello, this is Andrew with Missing Remote. Today we have three Anchor GAN USB Type-C chargers on hand to do a quick review and walkthrough of. Uh, two Nano 2 chargers. This is a 45 watt charger. This is a 65 watt charger. The 45 watt charger has one USB Type-C port on it and this flips down style plug on the back. 65 watt charger has two USB Type-C ports on the front and one USB type A port, and then a flip down plug on the back. One thing to note is that the ports on this 65 watt charger are labeled. We'll get into a little bit more around what, that, what these mean and how it impacts the usage of it in a bit, but the top one has an icon for a computer and the second one has an icon for a mobile tablet, and then the USB port is just unmarked. This is a 65 watt rated slim charger. It has a cord. The interesting thing to note about this is that while this is rated at 65 watts, the maximum output for any single device is 45 watts using the second USB type C port, which is rated at 45 watts. And then the first USB type C port is rated at 20 watts. Before taking a more detailed look at these uh, chargers. First, I need to point out that a couple days ago, I made a video about these these chargers where I said that this, this charger was not capable of doing 65 watts. One of the 17 people who saw that mentioned nicely that I probably need to check the cables that I was using. And while I was supremely confident at the time that I had done that, uh, it turns out that I was mistaken and I was in fact using a 60 watt cable so that's why I got the result that I did. That said, there are still some interesting results to be had here, and I wasn't totally wrong. But we're going to take this cable, take it out, put it off the desk, and for the purposes of the, from now on, we're going to use these 100 watt cables that actually say 100 watts on the, outs on the port here to, to do our testing. Before looking at that though, let's first examine how power strip friendly they are. Obviously the slim is gonna be very power strip friendly because it just has this you know, normal cord. So we're just gonna skip that and go right to the these 65 watt Nano 2. First thing to note is that you cannot use the first plug on the uh, power strip because of the way that the 65 watt charger is designed. So we have to step down to the second one goes in there fine but obviously it would break it would block off access to this first plug on the uh, power strip you can use the next plug down but it would have to be a pretty slim device in order to do that not the end of the world but it is what it is what that means though is that we cannot put our 45 watt charger in that position because of the size of the 65 watt and because of the size of the 45 watts. So we have to jump down another space and then we lose access to this plug in the power strip. I do wish that manufacturers were a little bit more power strip friendly in their designs, but you know, it is something that's not insurmountable because you can just buy some one of these uh, very short extension cords and then just make sure you include this in your travel bag. Let's have a look at power consumption numbers now. First off, let's start with the 65 watt charger, 65 watt Nano 2 charger. We should, can confirm that in standby it draws zero watts, which is fantastic. Let me just go ahead and start this so we make sure that we're drawing the most amount of power that we can. Uh, what I've got going on over here, I have a YouTube video and uh, Prime 9D5 running just to make sure that the laptop will be pulling the most amount of power that it can pull. I have one of these 100 watt cables plugged into the laptop. I'm going to plug it into the first USB type C port on this uh, Nano 2 charger. And we can see that after a little bit of negotiation, the power ramps up to just shy of 65 watts. So all good. I have my phone here, which is a, S, a Samsung S21 variant. The maximum power draw for this should be about 25 watts. It will be a little bit higher than that at times, but that's the um, 
constant load rating. So we're going to go ahead and plug that into the second port on here. And we can see that it renegotiates the power draw. We get a message on the laptop that says, hey, we're not getting 65 watts anymore, which is expected. But what's not expected is that our maximum power consumption here is just shy of 61 watts. So while this should be pulling 45 watts, and this should be pulling 20 watts, or some variant of that, where the total number equals 65, we're not actually getting that. We're actually getting 60, 61 watts. So while this is supposed to be a 65 watt charger, the only time that you actually get 65 watts is that if you're only using it by itself. One other interesting thing about this is that if we pull out computer, let's let this get back up to 25 watts to see, confirm that it actually can deliver 25 watts to this port, which it does, it actually delivers what, 30 right now? If I flip this over to the top port, let it ramp up. So yeah, ramped up. Now I plug the computer into the second port on here. Now we can see here that it is only getting up to just shy of 50 watts. So what that means is that, and this is not totally unexpected because you know they label the ports on here, but the maximum power consumption for this second port is probably around 25 watts continuous. Pick up the 45 watt nano charger, find the computer one, but I guess before we do that, let's first confirm that we are indeed getting zero watts in standby, which is fantastic. We can go ahead and plug that in. You can see this, we got our message on the screen. This is it's not getting 65 watts, which is expected behavior and then it ramps up to about 45 watts, which is expected behavior, and this is exactly what we expect to see. Go ahead and plug the mobile phone in here, and we can see here that it ramps up, looks like just shy of 30 watts briefly, and then gets settles down about 27. So this works exactly the way that we expect it to work. Put that off to the side and let's grab our slim charger. Let me go ahead and clear this message. Confirm that this also does zero watts in standby, which is fantastic. We are going to grab our computer, noting that when we plug this in, we get a nice little blue light. I probably would put some electrical tape that, on that if I was using this in the bedroom, but otherwise, totally cool. We are gonna plug this into the second 45 watt USB type C port. And we can see here that it ramps up to just shy of 45 watts. We get the message on the screen. So we're not getting 65 watts, which is expected behavior. We're gonna grab the phone. We're gonna plug that into this 20 watt port here. Phone starts charging, power starts negotiating and we cap out at 52 watts, 51.7, 51.8. So what that means is that while this is rated at 65 watts, and we have two ports here, one that's labeled 45 watts and one that's labeled 20 watts, we don't actually get 65 watts of power out of these two ports while we're using it in a configuration which should 65 watts and that is very disappointing. So I learned a lot in the process of testing these devices. Obviously the first thing is to make sure that I'm using 100 watt cables when I think I'm using 100 watt cables. But secondly, I, I'm disappointed with the output performance of this slim charger. 
but I would still recommend either one of these Nano 2 chargers, although you're definitely going to want one of these if you want to use it in a power strip. 45 watt is a no-brainer. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. The 65 watt does require some thought, I think. Obviously, if you're just going to use it by itself, no problem. Either It requires no additional thought. You get 65 watts out of it if you're using one device. Using multiple devices, you do have to think about how you, you're plugging the devices in. Again, that's not a big deal, but I would expect that it would do 65 watts when you have multiple devices plugged into it if those devices are requesting 65 watts. So it's somewhat disappointing that when you plug multiple things in, this is, becomes a 60 watt charger, but I don't think that that's the end of the world. Uh, I still think that the convenience of having a single charger versus multiple chargers outweighs that problem. Hopefully you thought that was useful. If you did, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I will get to them as soon as I can. Thanks.